One of the big stories now, the community of the University of Fort Hare has been rocked by the violent killing of one of its own students. It's understood the 23-year-old was killed by a man she knew well, and parts of her body were found dumped in East London. While the suspect has now been arrested, the tragedy has once again cast a spotlight on the unrelenting violence that's being meted out on women in our country. Government saying psychological support will be provided for affected staff and students, but many feeling this simply doesn't go far enough. Let's unpack these issues now, Bring in Apiwe and Lameza, who's a gender activist and an alumni of Fort Hare University. Apiwe, it's uh, great to see you, albeit on this incredibly disturbing story. And let me begin by passing on my condolences to you uh, as a member of this community in some respects. When you heard what had happened to Nositelo, take us through what went through your mind. Uh, thank you so much, Ayanda, for, for having me, um, and good morning to your viewers as well. Uh, we are in mourning, um, and, and when we heard this, we were deeply disturbed. And I just saw an interview with one of the residents um, in, in the familiar area that I'm in. Um, I'm, I currently reside in, and that shows you how even in Quigney, everyone else is just appalled, but also traumatized about the events that just transpired. Um, this is something also just really just new in our, in our in our community and feel like at some point that uh, the gender-based uh, violence and femicide pandemic has just um, been exacerbated. But also what is worrying is that um, we, as we've noted even from even um, the University of Forte that they will be extending uh, counseling um, services to students and staff, but you can partially see even that this is not only just affecting um, the, the, the university alone, but it, it also just broadens to society. Absolutely. It almost feels that everything has been said around what we should be doing to address issues around gender-based violence. And despite that, incidents like this take place. Definitely, definitely. And, and that, that is the, 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 the sad reality. And I mean, that is, that is why we, we are saying enough is, is enough. But also what is very sad is how we continue to be mimicked, but also just patronized um, in terms of the gender-based violence uh, pandemic. If there continues to be denialism, even from institutions, then trust me, we will never um, uh, start to really address um, the issues of, of gender-based violence. Yeah. But also it is our to just males as well, I mean, to self-introspect um, in their own corners as well, because they are the very same perpetrators. And that's why we're avoiding the same likes of the same government officials that during this time, even when it comes to um, government elections, that are using this plight um, to, to, to make themselves better as if they've been doing anything about this when we have been um, 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 trying to consult with them and um, figure out even possible um, mitigation strategies without no availability. Yeah. It's interesting, the Vice Chancellor of Forte University is saying that He's shocked. Again, we've been here before. We've heard that before. I'm reminded of the reaction to when Uine Nemkhekiana was killed, the reaction to Precious Ramabolana in uh, Limpopo when she was killed. Both uh, those women were university students at the time of their killing, and that also took place at a time when they essentially were under the custodianship in some respects of tertiary institutions themselves. Given what Forte has done and said till this point, where do you reckon the gaps still lie? Let's start here. So firstly, even that statement um, was issued in the late evening. Um, this is also after we've seeked um, numerous accountability from the university on social media platforms. Um, what, what transpired even on the early hours of the, the, the morning yesterday is that they have been treating, but also the, the issue that with institution, institutions of higher learning, uh, they worry more of reputational damage rather than actually addressing and, 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 and recognizing the issue of gender-based violence and femicides in their campuses. Um, and that is why the, the issue will always continue. And I remember we even had this conversation even um, with the University of Forte when they launched the gender-based violence policy in, in 2020, where we said that if the university does, doesn't take accountability and start spearheading uh, the gender-based violence policy, then it is a futile process. Because you remember, the University of Forte, the likes of historical uh, black universities, such as the University of Forte, are very patriarchal and tribalist in nature. So the agenda is to um, basically 
uh, sustain the status quo and therefore oppressing women in, very, in, in nature. And that's why we were offended by also the communication by um, the, 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 the mayor of um, the, the Buffalo City Municipality because language is very important. Mm. But also, you, you hear him there relentlessly and, and not even apologetic as a lifter to try to teach him because we are the same stakeholders as well that they, the same municipality is in collaboration with. And we're saying that language is very important in this current dem uh, demographic that we live in, but also victim blaming. Uh, you need, like, that's why it's important um, for men as well to read something, even if it's just a, pam a pamphlet, because if you then would understand the demographics, even the various factors that are at play here, this, we are talking about a student that um, didn't have residence, for instance, issues of ethnic that that are that are, that, that are lurking issues of residences that have continuously been a problem at the university of of Forte year in year out and yet every year we face these issues where a lot of women are victims and are very much vulnerable uh, because of not having um, 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 residences. And, and this is just an outcome of those various issues um, that we have always outlined. And it's, it's so sad because we have NGOs that are always just playing the role of government, in the, even nationally, which is partially the issue because there's no accountability. And with the University of Forte as well, and that it's always relied on standards one, it's always relied on organizations such as Inglo Vogazi, it's always relied on even on, in, in like NGOs that are outside to, to, to actually fight the, the scrooge instead of also t taking um, initiative um, when it comes to this. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I'm hoping we can hone in on the issue around language a bit more there, Apiwe. Um, what the mayor was saying left a lot to be desired, but what was equally troubling is how emboldened he felt in saying that in a very public manner and how he didn't necessarily recognize where he had erred. It suggests to me that A, a lot of work needs to be done, but B, a lot of these conversations are genuinely taking place in echo chambers where it is those who are aware of the language who even participate in initiatives instituted by universities. How do we break that chain? How do we break those echo chambers so that the message lands, dare I say, where it matters? It's, it's very important. I think willingness as well um, is very important, um, Ayanda. And so if I can just reflect on, on, on the incident, it, it, it also just stems back to 2018, right? Mm -hmm. When we were marching for like the total shutdown and we issued a memorandum, 24 demands firstly to the mayor of Kola Pagati. And then in that midst, as I was a spokesperson at that time, I was mishandled by his own security. He didn't even utter any words in terms of how he was going to, uh, um, as a mayor, in fact, actually deal with the, the gender-based violence scrutiny. But also he was just not, not even, uh, um, he didn't even apologize or wasn't even bothered even at that, at that time um, or what was going on and he went in into the city hall. And so this was something that we were expected because it's a continuous thing, right? And we do now understand that the mayor does have an issue in understanding gender-based violence and femicide because the first thing that he uttered to us uh, with an, a smirk on his face was that this is not femicide, this is not gender-based violence, this is uh, murder. And so that is that shows you that that is the den it, it, it denies them in the first stance. And for him to also just with a, 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 just talking to um, a group of young women who are mourning, who are triggered, who are feeling unsafe, to say that we should leave relationships. I mean, I, I think that how the COVID-19 has exacerbated the gender-based violence pandemic and the research that has gone into it, right? Mm -hmm. And even just the same day, uh, Minister Begitaila just speaking into the numbers that has increased, that would also just align the, 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 the mayor into understanding the different demographics, but also the area that we're in that is much more um, surrounded by crime, that there's no police visibility where they know that even crime is, is just part of the Kidney area. And so even for him, while in this aspect, to say that he, we should leave relationships, so that's putting solely blame on even Unosiktailo as well, as if that was easy for someone that even didn't have anywhere else to go. So it's very much, um, he, 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 he is, I'm not sure if he's willing to, to, to have these discussions because I'm saying that we have engaged with him since 2018 
um, but also there are uh, structures like your Masmanyane that are in coalition, and they were there um, at the event. And what we were saying is that we want to teach you, and we are not violent at all. We're saying you are wrong because language matters. But you would have seen then from his response that he is not really interested in that. Apiru and Tameza, thank you for your reflections on this incredibly troubling story. Really do appreciate your time. Apiru is a gender activist and an alumni of Forte University.